Okay, today we're going to take a look at the address book challenge presented by TopCoder. All right, so the address book is created using three separate classes. It creates an entry class, which is basically the basic data unit for the address book. It contains the address book class, which is the container for those data units. And then it contains uh, something called a menu controller class, which is the user input uh, class that allows uh, the user to uh, work with the address book at the command or at the command prompt or at the terminal window um, for the specific program. All right, so let's take a quick look and see how this all comes together and works and then we'll then we'll go in and dig deep into each of the classes themselves all right so um, to run this uh, first we need to make sure that we're in the correct directory so we need to be in address book and we'll clear the screen all right now we're going to go ahead and run the menu controller class again the menu controller is that class that allows us access to use this address book so we will go ahead and open that file again this isn't actually it built in the spec folder so again we're uh, going ahead and opening the menu controller uh, Ruby file. Ah, forgot when we run our tests, we kind of have to clear this out. All right, so one more time, we'll run the Ruby file, the menu controller Ruby file. Okay, so here we have a very simple uh, console input. Um, now, this is, as I said, we'll get into the the code of this in, in a minute, but just to see how it works. Now, as you can see, the address book currently has zero entries in it, um, which means that if I tried to view all the entries, it would come back with a blank screen because there's nothing in the address book at this time. Um, so let's go ahead and create an entry so we can see some of this magic of how it works. So we're going to choose option two to create an entry. Now we have to enter a name and let's just enter Jack Stone as the name for this person in the address book. Now it says enter a phone number because all of our entries, which we'll learn in a minute, have a name, a phone number, and an email address. So let's go ahead and enter that phone number. Now when this phone number is entered, it's just entered as a string. So you can use any format you want for this number. You don't need spaces, you don't need parentheses, you don't even really need the hyphen in there. Um, again, because this is just a simple string. So it's just going to, cha uh, to save the string when we enter it. And then the email address, again, this is just a string, so it's not really testing for email validity, um, which could potentially come at a later date. But right now, it's just looking for us to input a string. All right, so I've entered the name, the phone number, and the email address. Okay, so um, what I've built into this uh, web menu is for it to actually clear the screen before it displays a new screen every time. This keeps your con console window really, really clean when you are uh, when you add up a whole bunch of entries or you're looking at a whole bunch of entries. It, it just really keeps the screen clean. Now, as you can see, I have added one entry into the address book, um, so there is one entry in here now. Now, if I want to view all the entries, which at this point is simply one, I can go ahead and choose option one. Okay, and as you can see, it says name, Jack Stone, phone, 555-555-5555, and the email is test at test.com. Now, I've also added in uh, kind of a hold screen. Um, so what this does is it, it holds the terminal until you press enter. Um, because if you don't have this, then it's just going to flash that information really fast and go back to the menu screen. So you never really get a chance to see the data that's being drawn from this address book. So again, as I said, 
uh, press enter to continue. So go ahead and press enter and it takes you right back to that main menu screen. Okay, now the next option is the search for an entry. Now you have to know what's in the entry or in the address book to actually search for it. Um, so if I want to search for the entry, it's asking for the name. Now I, I did this just simple, it's a simple search and I'm only searching by name. Um, if I wanted, I could probably search by phone number or by email address. But again, um, when you're typically searching in an address book, you're searching by a person's name. So I'm going to go ahead and enter Jack Stone. And it finds Jack Stone. And what I've done is I, when it finds an entry, it's, it, go ahead, it goes ahead and displays that entry right below that. So again, Jack Stone, 555, 555, etc. And again, I put the hold screen in there to hold that data on the screen until I'm ready to move on or until the user is ready to move on. Okay, um, now the next uh, option is a slightly more complicated. Now this is actually going to take a file. Now this could be uh, four entries, this could be 100 entries, or however many entries you have in that comma separated uh, value file. And it's going to import all of those entries into the address book. Um, so I have a simple test file set up for this. Um, and I named it, ironically enough, addresses.csv. And as you can see, I have four entries in here. Now, these four entries will be added to our address book as soon as we import them. Notice they are separated by commas, and that's what's being looked for. And um, when the uh, import pulls this in, it's going to separate those values by that comma, and then first entry will be the name, second phone number, and third, of course, the email address. So let's close that out. Actually import this file. Note, right now I have one entry in my address book. So I choose option four, and I have to enter a file name. Now, again, we have to know the file name, addresses.csv, press enter, Notice it just goes back to the menu screen, but if you take a look up here at the entries value, it has, now has five entries um, in the address book. So if we wanted to view all those entries, we would go ahead and go view entry. So again, press one. And again, I now have five entries. And what it's going to do now is it's going to scroll through those entries every time I press the enter key. So the next entry will be Rich, followed by Joe, followed by Al, followed by Bob. And as you can see, each of those entries is now an entry within the address book. Okay, and if I wanted to search for one of those entries, again, I go ahead and press three to search, and let's say I wanna find Bob. Bob comes up, phone number 222-2222, and his email b.test. Again, none of this information is being checked for uh, actual validity, so I'm only looking at a seven digit phone number here, and b.test doesn't really have the at, so there's no domain for this address. But certainly, if this were a real true uh, address book file, it would totally have that domain and potentially a full phone number in there as well. Okay, press enter, and now I'm back to my main menu. Still have five entries in my address book, and looking at our final selection, which is exit. Now this exit is just going to be a simple exit. Um, as soon as I press uh, enter, it's going to exit me from the program, and we will be back to our main terminal window. So, as you can see, back to the terminal window, we'll clear screen, and now we can take a look at the code. All right. So we'll start off with the entry. Now again, this is our basic data class. Um, now it's created using an entry and each of these entry uh, objects are going to be initialized with a name, a phone, and an email address. Um, and then I've also built in a display um, because this is kind of like a two string method, um, but it's a little bit more complicated or a little bit more uh, viewable and user friendly. Um, in that it show, gives us a good display of name, phone, and email address. Okay, um, moving on to the address book. Now again, the address book is going to be the backbone of this entire uh, program. 
Um, so it is our container class. Everything we do with these values is built into the address book. Um, so every method that we will need to actually manipulate our data is built here. Okay, so you'll notice it requires that entry class um, and then it initializes itself with an empty an array, um, an empty array um, called at entries. Um, then as we go through we can see our we have uh, values to uh, add entries or methods to add entries into the book. Now a little bit of this is repetitive but the reason for this is is that uh, in order for us to build a test file um, we have to have uh, access to a method that will simply add an entry in um, to the entries array and then we wanted something that would allow um, the user to manually add in an entry. Now this add entry works with both this manual entry and the import entry that we'll get to a little bit later. But as you can see, um, the add entry method simply creates a new entry and then it's going to fill those values into entry, into that new entry. So entry name equals the name that we pass in, entry phone is the phone, and email is the email. And once it's created that entire entry, then it passes um, that new entry or pushes that new entry into the entries array. Okay, now again, as I said, we need a manual, uh, something to allow the user to manually enter a value or an entry into this address book. And so I've created uh, this manual uh, method um, in order to one get a name from the user, uh, get a phone number from the user, and get an email address from the user as well. And once that happens, once it gets all those values, um, it runs that add entry with those values um, as parameters. Okay, our next method is our search method. Um, now this search method, again, uh, I have uh, two different search methods. Uh, one is the backbone of the search method. It does the searching for us. Um, the other is the manual search for whatever entry we want to find in the address book. Um, so this allows, this manual search allows the user to search using this search method. Um, so it sets a value to found a value equal to false. Um, then it uh, iterates over each entry in the in the uh, address book and if it finds the entry um, then it uh, makes that found value true um, and then finally we return that found value which is then now true. So if the entry is found it returns true uh, and then should we be using the manual entry um, or the manual search, we again run that search and when it finds that entry in the address book, uh, it displays the entry to the user. Okay, our next method um, again is the view all entries or the view entries method. Now this is the one method that allows us to uh, cycle through all the entries that are in the address book. Um, and you'll note I uh, commented that it's one entry per screen and then you have to press enter to display the next entry. Okay, um, so uh, this is actually utilizes a helper method which I created called hold screen and that's what keeps that entry on the screen until you press enter. All right, so again, uh, it iterates over each of the entries in the address book and it clears the screen before it does anything. Now, I do this by utilizing the built-in system 
uh, method and I'm calling clear on that system method so it clears the terminal or the command uh, console window every single time before it displays an entry. Then it runs the display entry method which we saw here in entry which gives us the name, the phone, and the email address in that nice clear uh, order. Then uh, what it does is it it adds a space below it um, because for the info that's going to be given on the hold screen, we want to make the entry really, really clear. So we add a space just below it um, for that info uh, line um, so that we can clearly see that the data being displayed is the entry that we're looking at. All right, uh, the next uh, couple of methods all deal with the importing of data files um, or data from a CSV file. Um, so we have the backbone method, and that says import file, and it takes uh, a parameter called file. Um, then it uses the built-in uh, file open, um, and then it iterates over each uh, line in the file, um, splitting that line at the comma. Again, this is a comma-separated value, so I really, really need to split that line at the comma. Um, and then what happens here is it then calls the add entry method um, from the top, uh, which creates a new entry, then adds name, phone, and email. And the name, phone, and email are each of those values on the line um, that have been separated by the commas. So the value at, uh, at zero, at the array uh, once that's built in the split, at zero is the name. At position one or index one is the phone number, and at index two you get the email address. Okay, and as I said, um, we always need a manual input method uh, to work with this so that a user can actually import data themselves. Um, and so I built in that helper method, which is basically just called file selection. Um, and what it does is it gives the prompt for the user to enter a file name, takes in that prompt, cuts off the line break, and then um, because all the files are in the spec folder or the spec directory, um, it looks in that spec directory for the name of that file that we pa pass in. Uh, once it does that, it runs import file on that with that as the um, parameter. And then, of course, it goes in and adds each of those, those uh, lines. Then we have the uh, the next method is the size method, and this just returns the number of entries in our array up here and actually displays that uh, number, that size, at the top of the menu. This is where we get the one and five entries that we saw earlier. And then finally, at the bottom here is my helper method, um, and this is really just to hold the screen at, um, at that uh, display screen. Um, and notice I'm using the uh, gets method. Uh, all this does is it looks for that user carriage return um, to move the line on, but it's not looking for anything in particular, so I don't have to set it for set it to a variable. I'm just holding the screen with that, uh, waiting for the user to press the carriage return to move on through the the rest of the the loop. Okay, and again I put. Uh, another blank line at the end of this and again this is just for display methods to make it look a little bit pretty um, so that we can actually see the information without um, getting too overwhelmed with a wall of text when we actually run the file. All right and so the final method that we're going to take a look at is the menu controller. Now this is basically just what we see in the console window. It has uh, a couple of methods that um, are built in and uh, that's really it. It's just a user interface for this uh, program. So again it requires uh, the address book and the entry to work um, and it initializes by creating that um, that container uh, using the address book um, and this is basically just going to hold all of our entries. And then what it does is uh, it sets the first method, which is the display method, and this is just what we see on the screen. And all I've done is I've set a, an infinite loop, um, so it's looping basically until we break out of the menu. And that's pretty much all of our exit, our exit option does, is it simply breaks us out of that loop. 
which takes us back to the terminal window. Okay, so um, take a look at this display method. Uh, again, I clear the screen just to make it look pretty so we're not looking at a wall of text. And then it's going to put the lines in, welcome to my address book. Just below that, it's going to put in the, the option or the line that says, hey, look, this is the main menu with the number of entries. And again, I call that size method from the address book class. Um, so I'm going to get that specific number of entries to display as well. Then we get the user options, one, two, three, four, and five. Um, and then a good clear message that says, hey, look, this is where we're actually entering the information. And I use the print so I don't skip to the next line. And then the choice is going to use that get s uh, method. Um, and it's going to uh, make or um, change that string that I get from the get s into an integer. Um, again, it didn't have to change it to an integer, and I, I mean, there is no real reason to change it to an integer, uh, but it just looks crisp and clean when I'm actually using this helper method down below. Now, should the, any should that choice ever be five? Again, it is just going to break the loop, exit us from the program, and take us back to the terminal window. So uh, that is my guard method or my guard uh, instance. Uh, and so again, the loop will break if choice five is selected. If it's not, it goes ahead and runs this helper method uh, selection called selection, and it's going to pass in that parameter choice. Okay, so again, the, the helper method basically just calls those methods from the address book. So if I choose one, we're going to call view entries. And of course, then we go through and we view our entries one at a time, um, pressing enter between to scroll through. Um, else, if the choice is two, uh, then the address book is going to uh, allow the user to manually enter a new address book entry. Uh, choice three is that uh, manual search. So it's going to search for an entry in the address book. Again, you have to know the name to find that uh, item. And then choice four uh, is actually that CSV injection um, into the address book. Um, and notice I'm running the file selection. Now each of these, none of these uh, require any um, parameters passed in. And this is um, actually this allows us to only or to run these methods just by choosing the number. All right, and that pretty much covers it. So if there are any questions, uh, comments, or anything like that, go ahead and uh, post them into the forum on the Top Coder forum for this challenge, and I will answer them as soon as I possibly can. Thank you.